So we're going to talk about a pendulum. We've talked about pendulums a little bit before and where we see them. Okay, where do you typically see a pendulum at? In a clock, okay? And what would the, what would the period of a clock pendulum have to be? One second. Yeah, that's what we want it to be, one second. Okay, that's what, um, that's what the pendulum is about, okay, in the clock. And, it, and they might even make it a half a second. That way it goes one, uh, every time it swings, it's, it's um, one second. So I guess the period would be two seconds, not half. Okay, they might make it that way too. I haven't really looked at the grandfather clock in a while. So um, I'm not sure what way they're built. But essentially we want it to either be the whole period is two seconds. So each time it swings, it's a second to count. Or they might make the whole period one second. I'm not really sure. But that's what we need to be thinking about. Okay. Um, pendulums are specific in that their cords or their strings don't stretch. Okay, they shouldn't stretch. Um, they have a, a certain length of our cord, uh, which is given by an L. Okay, and really it's normally a, a lowercase L, so you might not see a capital L, um, but it's normally a lowercase. Um, and we don't really care about the mass of the cord or of the string. Okay, that doesn't make a difference to us. All we care about necessarily uh, is really the mass on the end. Okay, and what, what that is. Okay. Questions there? Okay. Let's do a little bit of a practice for this particular pendulum. Uh, pendulum complete 23 oscillations in 58 seconds. Find the period and the frequency of that pendulum. Okay, so to find the frequency, oscillations per second, how do we go about solving for that? Yeah, divide oscillations by second. So we take 23 divided by 58, and we should get about 0.4, essentially, 396. Yeah? Okay. Remember that all we have to do is, if you can't decide which number you should divide which by, just look at the units, okay? The units for frequency is oscillations over seconds. So that means we should take 23 divided by 58, okay? The period, however, is the other way around. So seconds per oscillation, so we want to take 58 divided by 23, and we get a period equal to 2.52. Very good, okay? So if you're unsure about where you need to divide or what numbers you need to work with, Take a look at the units, okay? And you know frequency um, is oscillations per second. You know period has to be seconds per one oscillation, okay? So look at the units there if you're unsure about which to divide by, okay? We take two new equations for a pendulum specifically. Do these equations look somewhat familiar? Yes. They're basically our simple harmonic motion equations, except we substitute the length of our pendulum and what's little g? gravity. It's always 9.8, okay? So we're taking here the length of the pendulum and gravity into the consideration. Does the mass of the pendulum, Bob, even matter to us here? No, it doesn't slow it down. It doesn't speed it up. So the mass of the pendulum, Bob, we don't really care about. We care about the length and we care about gravity. Let's go ahead and try a problem here to solve for frequency of a pendulum that has a 0.54 kilogram mass for the 1.4 meter cord. Oops. Okay. Do we need the mass of our pendulum, Bob? No. So you can ignore it. Okay, 1 over 2 pi, square root of 9.8 over L, which is 1.4. 
Okay, this one's pretty straightforward to solve for. You're going to solve inside the square root first, then square root it, then take it uh, times 1 over 2 pi, or divide by 2, divide by pi, either way. Okay, Nick, what do you have for your frequency? Perfect. 0.42 seconds. That's exactly what I had. Yeah, yeah, seconds. Sorry. Hertz. Yeah, you're right. I think I even put seconds on the... Hmm. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, 0.42 hertz, not seconds. All right, let's try another one here. This period has a, this pendulum has a period of 0.98. Now we want to solve for the length of the chord. So this algebraically takes a little bit more work than the previous problem. Okay, t equals Okay, so algebraically here, I'm going to divide by 2 pi first. Remember, in your calculator, you, need to do the, you either need to do divide by 2, divide by pi, or divide by parentheses 2 pi. Okay, so that gives me 0.1559 equals square root of L over 9.8. To get rid of that square root, I'm going to square both sides, which gives me 0. 0.0. Two, four, three. I'm going to take that times 9.8. Okay, so I got a length equal to about 0.24 meters. Do we agree? Yeah? Okay, very good. This should be pretty simple after we did the whole simple harmonic motion section because all we're doing is changing two little variables of our equation. Okay, so um, not a whole lot changes here between a pendulum and simple harmonic motion. The last thing that we're really going to look at with chapter 11, this is going to kind of wrap up chapter 11 and we're going to start chapter 13, but the last thing we want to talk about in chapter 11 is something called intensity. Okay, and it's basically this transformation, I'm sorry, this transportation of waves. Okay, whether sound waves is just kind of what we're going to talk about. Lots of different types of waves, but we're looking at this transportation of energy through waves. Okay, and it's something called intensity. So intensity is given by a capital I. And what it is, what we're looking at here is essentially power over the area that it's spreading. Okay, power is energy over time, which we're going to look at or we've looked at that in our energy chapter, uh, but we're going to look at power over the area that it's been spread. Okay, When we think of intensity, we usually think of the sound intensity that's traveling out. Okay? And that's the example that we're going to look at today, um, is these sound waves and how intense they are at certain distances from their origin. Okay. Okay, it says down here, in intensity is proportional to the square of the amplitude, okay? So here's just kind of a, a simple example of that, um, and we're going to give a full equation for it on the next slide for intensity, but the intensity for, for, the units for intensity are joules per meter squared times seconds, okay? We don't deal with intensity a lot, but I'm going to show you just a little brief clip of it, okay? Um, Intensity is not the main focus of this chapter, but it does touch on it just a little bit, so that's all I'm going to do with it.
talk about intensity and basically how intense something is at a distant from its origin, we need to look at the waves three-dimensionally, okay? At its origin point, these waves spread out in a complete sphere, right? They spread out three-dimensionally. Sound doesn't just travel one, one way, or light just doesn't travel one way. It spreads three-dimensionally. So what we're looking at here is this output of power, okay, or intensity, um, is proportional to 1 over the radius squared of that wave. So as it gets farther and farther from its origin, we're going to look at the square of that radius. So we're going to be able to connect or compare the intensity of two points on this wave as it goes out. Okay. So if you think about specifically sound at its origin, as you get farther and farther from, the, from its origin, does the intensity of the sound get greater or smaller? Smaller, right? The farther you are away from the source, the less you can hear it, right? The, the wave kind of, or the wave of sound kind of de-intensifies. I don't know what that, I don't know what the word with that. Decreases. Decreases. Decreases in intensity. Yeah, I guess I should say that. Okay. But it gets softer, okay? So that's what we're looking at here. This is the equation that I think you should have on your equation sheet here. Intensity at the first point over intensity at the second point is equal to the radius of the second point squared over the radius of the first point squared. So it's that reciprocal kind of relationship uh, that you see up here. Okay, that's the one that we're going to look at, and that's what we're going to use um, to compare these two intensities. Okay, Intensity of the sound. So let's look at our equation here that says intensity of the first over intensity of the second point equals radius of the second point squared over radius of the first point squared. Okay, so all we're going to do here is we want to determine the intensity at the second point. So we're solving here for I2. Okay, we're going to solve for I2. And we want to find out the radius that's three times farther away from the original source. So what should we plug in for R2? Three. A 3. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to have... Intensity of the first over intensity of the second, 3 squared over R1 squared, which what do we know R1 is if we're saying that R2 is 3? Yeah, we're saying essentially the first is at a radius of 1. Okay, just for simplistic numbers, we're just going to plug in that 1. Okay, which means that intensity of the first over intensity of the second is equal to 9. And if we want to solve for I2, we're going to switch those two places which means that intensity of the first over 9 is equal to intensity of the second. Okay, so what that is, can anyone explain to me kind of in terms of sound what, that's, what that means at the second point? If you're three times farther away, how intense is the sound as compared to the first place? One-ninth, yeah. So you're hearing one-ninth of what those people at the front are hearing. Okay. That's all I really want you to see with intensity here is um, kind of the connection between that three-dimensional wave spreading and what that looks like uh, as you move farther and farther from the original source.